This is CBN News Watch. Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch for this Valentine's Day, Friday, February 14th. I'm Mark Martin. Today, the numbers keep climbing on the coronavirus outbreak, but the trend may finally be turning on this new disease. Lawmakers in Virginia walk out of their session after a pastor prays against abortion and same-sex marriage. The United Nations releases a new list designed to punish companies, including some from the U.S., for doing business in the Holy Land. We'll tell you how this ties into the movement to boycott Israel. And on this Valentine's Day, we'll hear from a former porn star who's on a mission to help Christian singles stay pure in a world drenched in pornography. It's all part of the new CBN program, Unhooked. Those stories and more today on Newswatch. We begin with the increasing death toll and rising numbers of cases of the new COVID-19 coronavirus in China after it started using a new way of diagnosing the disease. 121 more people died, according to the government, with more than 5,000 confirmed new cases. The death toll in China now stands at 1,380, with nearly 64,000 confirmed total cases. The increasing number of cases doesn't necessarily mean that there's a surge in new infections, just that the new methods are finding more of the ones that were already there. Some experts believe the virus is actually slowing down and may ultimately be no worse than the flu. This could be the equivalent of uh, a, a mild to moderate influenza pandemic or maybe even uh, a really bad influenza season. Here in the U.S., health officials confirmed the 15th case, a patient who had been quarantined at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. The White House said President Trump is not bothered by the statement from his Attorney General William Barr about the president's tweets. The president tweeted his criticism of career Justice Department prosecutors for recommending a long prison sentence nine years for former Trump advisor Roger Stone. Barr told ABC News that the president should stop tweeting about Justice Department criminal cases and said he wasn't going to be pushed around. I'm not going to be bullied or influenced by anybody. I cannot do my job here at the department uh, with a constant background commentary that, that undercuts me. The White House responded by saying the president wasn't bothered at all by Barr's statements and that he has full faith and confidence in him. Several members of the Virginia House of Delegates turned their backs on a black pastor Tuesday and walked out of chambers when he prayed against abortion and same-sex marriage. The Reverend Robert Grant of the Father's Way Church in Warrington, Virginia, led the opening prayer, but his prayer turned into a warning of God's wrath for laws that violate biblical principles on the unborn and marriage, saying, quote, we should never rewrite what God has declared. Democratic Speaker Eileen filler Corn interrupted by banging her gavel and leading lawmakers in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Washington Post reports many Democrats and some Republicans walked out. You can see the prayer and response on CBNNews.com. The Equal Rights Amendment has been dead for nearly 40 years, but the democratically controlled House of Representatives voted Thursday to remove the 1982 deadline for ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment for women. Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been pushing to get the controversial amendment added to the Constitution. Senior Washington correspondent Jennifer Wishon explains. With this resolution, we take a giant step toward equality for women, progress for families, and a stronger America. The Equal Rights Amendment, which says equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex, passed Congress in 1972, but it failed to get the approval needed from 38 states, the three-fourths required to amend the Constitution before its 1979 and then extended 1982 deadlines passed. Plus, a number of states that did ratify the ERA later rescinded their approval. It is time to guarantee true gender equality under the United States Constitution. Despite the deadline expiring decades ago, Virginia revived the debate in January when it became the 38th state to ratify. The Commonwealth's first female Speaker of the House ensured the ERA was the first bill to pass out of her chamber. For the women of Virginia and the women of America, the resolution has finally passed. We will no longer suffer in silence as we are discriminated against. 
We will not stand by while being paid less. We won't keep quiet about violence perpetrated against women with impunity. But critics say the ERA is the opposite of what it claims. They say it actually harms women and mandates abortion on demand. This is about breaking down any prohibitions in any state against abortion. This is really about creating the inevitability on a federal level for abortion to be illegal. Any reason, any number, um, all paid for by the taxpayer. In addition, Nance says there are 800 gender-specific laws designed to protect women, like the Pregnancy Discrimination Act that would disappear under the ERA. Do we deserve special protection in certain areas because biologically we need them, or should those all end? While Democrats work to revive the amendment, liberal icon Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg says the ERA is dead. She encourages supporters to start over in Congress. It's unlikely a new ERA as written would pass the Senate. Getting three quarters of the state to ratify it would also be a challenge, but this fight is far from over. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Coming up, the United Nations Human Rights Council released a blacklist this week designed to punish more than 100 companies doing business in East Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria in the Holy Land. We'll tell you how it ties into the movement to boycott and sanction Israel and what you can do about it right after this. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Get the top political news and analysis from Washington on Faith Nation, tonight at 6 Eastern, only on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to News Watch. The United Nations Human Rights Council released a blacklist this week designed to punish more than 100 companies, including U.S. giants General Mills and Motorola, who are doing business in East Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria in the Holy Land. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, the move ties into the movement to boycott and sanction Israel. Reaction came quickly after the UN Human Rights Council released the so-called BDS blacklist designed to punish more than 100 companies doing business in East Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the Golan Heights. Israel froze ties with the council's leader, accusing the office of serving the BDS campaign. United States Senator Tom Cotton accused the council of persecuting Israel while protecting the world's worst tyrants calling on it to investigate the crimes of its own members instead of obsessing over the Jewish state. It's important to note that it is not, as some claim, a blacklist, nor does it qualify any company's activities as illegal. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to boycott those who boycott Israel, calling the Human Rights Council 
a biased body that is devoid of influence. His political rival, Benny Gantz, also condemned the publication, calling it a dark day for human rights. They were working on this, they held it back, and now after a peace plan is launched, they go ahead and do that. Shame on the Human Rights Council. Palestinian Authority vowed to use the list to drive the companies out and demand compensation. Ironically, any resulting boycotts would likely hurt Palestinians the most. For example, CBN News has reported how international pressure forced the SodaStream company to leave Mishor Adumim and move to Israel, costing many of the 500 Palestinian employees their jobs. NGO monitors Yona Schiffmiller told CBN News much of the list came from BDS-linked organizations, and Israel claimed several groups with terror links push the UN to publish the list. The activities that these companies are being targeted for are completely legitimate. There is no international standard that bars business activity in occupied territories or in settlements. Many of the companies that we're talking about are conducting activities that were outlined in the Oslo Accords. Christian business leaders from some 40 nations have pledged to combat the BDS movement by pursuing business with Israeli companies. We've invited them in order to connect with Israeli businesses, meet face to face and create those connections and transactions that will help bring Israeli innovation to the world. I'd encourage your viewers to do double, triple the amount of business with the companies on that list. I would encourage uh, your viewers to write letters to those companies, encouraging them to continue to write letters to Congress in protest. I think what they did was outrageous. And Chris Mitchell is with us now from Jerusalem. Chris, what other reactions have you seen to the release of the list? Well, first of all, Mark, I'll talk more about Jason Greenblatt. He was the architect, uh, the, one of the main architects of the deal of the century, trying to bring Israelis and Palestinians together. Uh, he also said in our interview with him that, uh, as, he, uh, as he mentioned, you know, trying to get Christian groups to actually support many of these businesses in Judea and Samaria. Uh, I, my inbox was filled, actually, with many emails from Jewish groups uh, actually asking for help uh, to combat what they believe is a really ill-timed uh, time to, to delegitimize many of these groups within uh, Judea, Samaria, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights. And I wanted to add, uh, Mark, what area are we talking about? You can see behind me the walls of uh, e e Jerusalem, the old city. That's what we're talking about, businesses actually in there. So they're trying to delegitimize these places punish these businesses, and actually this is the biblical heartland uh, of Israel. You go back 3,000 years, you talk about Shiloh, all these places where the patriarchs uh, really had uh, much of the Bible was made, and this is the effort, what they're trying to do is de delegitimize this part of Israel. What efforts have been made to help Jewish businesses and Palestinian workers work together? Uh, it's a great question, uh, Mark, because I don't think a lot of people believe, know that there actually are Israeli companies and Palestinian workers that are actually working together. Ariel, which is one of those large Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria, is one example. It's called the Barkan Industrial Park, where you have Israeli businesses employing many Palestinian workers. And they need to, people really need to realize that these Palestinian workers are getting three to four times the wage they would get with Palestinian businesses. So when you have this kind of blacklist, when you have the BDS movement, it actually, as the story reported, hurts Palestinian workers. And also there's an effort, uh, effort uh, uh, Mark, to actually have Arabs and Jews work together. There's something called the Judea Samaria Chamber of Commerce, where you actually have uh, Jewish uh, businessmen working with Arabs businessmen. Uh, it's really a good news story, actually, that's been happening. We reported on one of these uh, meetings uh, last year, and uh, people need to realize that Arabs, to really, really being courageous, are working with Jewish businesses, and that is happening right now. On another topic, Chris, Israel has established a new Iran command to deal specifically with a threat from Iran. What can you tell us about that? Well, uh, Mark, it's called the Momentum Plan. It was uh, uh, put together by the IDF chief of staff. It's recognizing the increased threat of Iran, uh, of ballistic missiles, and it's trying to organize the whole IDF to combat and, and prepare for any major combat, especially uh, any p major war, especially with Iran. So they're probably going to have a nationwide Iron Dome and also smart weapons, uh, Mark, that are really being used together, the, the state-of-the-art weapons that the IDF has and, and working together both ground and air and defense systems uh, to really prepare against a possible war with Iran. What's on Jerusalem Dateline tonight, Chris? 
Well, two main things. Uh, obviously, we're going to have more reports on what's happening with the U.N. Uh, blacklist uh, announced, but also we have an extended interview with Jason Greenblatt. As I said, he was one of the chief architects of the deal of the century. And really, I, what I think is an exciting report, uh, Mark, about our crowd, it's really bringing the, uh, investors from around the world to uh, participate in, uh, in the groundbreaking uh, technology innovation here in Israel. So we'll have that report as well on this week's Jerusalem Dateline. All right, our Middle East Bureau Chief, Chris Mitchell from Jerusalem. Thanks for your hard work, Chris. We appreciate it. And again, you can see more news from the Middle East from Chris and his team tonight on the CBN News Channel. It's at 930 Eastern. Still ahead, a show of great sportsmanship and a kindred faith among college basketball players when we talk sports with Sean Brown. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Our Sean Brown is here for a little sports talk here on CBN Newswatch. Always good to see you, Sean. You too, Mark. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you as well. First of all, we start off with an encouraging story yeah. of faith and good sportsmanship. Tell us what happened when a player was recently injured in a Pac-12 game yeah. between Stanford and Colorado. What, what happened there? Well, basically, um, forward Evan Batty was, was making a, a fast break. When you're making a fast break and you're watching basketball, you're sprinting down and trying to get that layup or that dunk. But he had one guy to pass in uh, Stanford forward Oscar De Silva um, to try to to try to contest. And when he went up for the shot, both of them got tangled. They both fall. Uh, but Oscar De Silva took the brunt of that fall. He ended up falling down, hitting his head on the back of the hardwood. Um, they later found out that he had some lacerations from that. Obviously, they're going to take him out of the game and check for concussions. But um, and so as they're, as they're escorting him out, just attending to him, players from both teams met on the court along with coaches, and just started praying for him, man. Um, and, and it's just a, a phenomenal thing to see. It's chilling to see. It's like players intuitively know, okay, we need to, we need to turn and we need to lift up this young man who has just injured one of our colleagues here, uh, who, who on the, or players on the court who have just been injured. And um, it's just beautiful to see, man, these guys coming together, lifting up the name of the Lord, and just saying, Lord, let's intercede on this player's behalf. Great uh, example of teamwork, great example of faith in sports, man. Just wonderful to see. Yeah, it is. That boldness is yeah, incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. well, let's talk about the postseason for professional football players <laughs> yeah, and what's next. Next, man, the teams are looking at their charts, trying to figure out who are we letting go, who are we keeping. We've got the, uh, the draft coming up later in April. So the combine is just around the corner, starts February 27th. Um, and so they're looking at the boards, trying to figure out, okay, who do we need? Who do we need to get? And so that's the mode right now. Everybody's trying to figure out, okay, negotiating right now, because in just a little over a week, it's, it's showtime. So it's time to figure out what these college players look like. Tua, uh, Joe Burrow, all these guys. Do we want this guy? Do we not want this guy? Who do we need? 
And so that's what's going on right now in, in professional football. But there's another league. Yes, let's talk <laughs> co college now. I understand that Alabama is now number yeah. one again yeah. in the preseason college rankings. Uh, well, you know, it's early. Uh, you know, teams or, or uh, you know, critics, they, they try to look and, 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 uh, and try to figure out, okay, who, now that Joe Burrow's gone, now that Tua's gone, these mm -hmm. two teams, you know, what are they going to look like? Who's staying? Who's going? Alabama right now, a lot of the guys are coming back. You know, a, a lot of their uh, postseason run, uh, was was um, altered, obviously, because Tua was injured. But now here we go another season. And so we'll have to see. I think it's a little early to tell um, what they're going to look like. But right now, okay, you know, they're saying, hey, they're going to be ranked number one. But time will tell. We're going to have to look at Mac Jones to see if he's going to be the guy uh, that they accept, uh, quarterback Mac Jones, expect him to be. Um, who, is he going to be the guy? You know, and that's the big question. Will Mac Jones be the guy uh, when the season starts? And so time will tell. We'll see. Do you have a favorite going into the college football season? Next you know fall? what? I, 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 I love Alabama, but I, I'm, I'm an ACC boy. Um, I, I, I like the SEC football, but I got to stay with my S ACC boys, man. I got to stay with Virginia Tech. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So we'll just see. Time will tell, man. That's right. Time that's right. Tell. We'll talk about what's going coming up on Going the Distance this weekend. Um, this weekend, um, we've got Joe Gibbs, uh, former, uh, uh, excuse me, former uh, NFL coach for the Washington Redskins, Hall of Famer was just inducted into the NASCAR uh, Hall of Fame. Wow. And so um, I had a chance to catch up with them um, earlier this week with him and his partner, uh, Norm Miller, who is the owner and CEO of Interstate Batteries. And so they're talking about their partnership, their friendship that is rooted in Christ, which is interesting, man. I, I love to see these guys coming together for years. He's got, you know, five Cup Series championships. So he's got three Super Bowl championships. Now he's got five Cup Series championships among those awards. And so it's just a, a great conversation about these guys and their partnership rooted in faith. All right. The multi-talented Joe Gibbs. Yeah, man. For sure. Yeah, All man. right. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. All right. You can catch Going the Distance with Sean this weekend on the CBN News Channel. It's Saturday at 630 and Sunday at 730, both Eastern times. Thanks again, Sean. Hey, thank you, Mark. Coming up, a word for this Valentine's Day, Purity. A former porn star is on a mission to help Christian singles live a pure life. She's now a co-pastor with her husband, and they're part of a new CBN program, helping people struggling with porn find freedom. We're going to hear from them when we come back. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, protect your brain, and get it today. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. 
The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a better gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. Regents first ROTC graduate student. Thanks for staying with us. A former porn, porn star is on a mission to help Christian singles live a life of purity. Brittany De La Mora made over 300 films during her time in the porn industry. She became a Christian after a group of believers shared the gospel with her. Today, Brittany and her husband Richard serve as pastors at Triple X Church. They help people, including many Christians, who are struggling with porn to find freedom. CBN News reporter Charlene Aaron spoke with them about the issue of porn and purity. Pornography is just contaminating the minds of so many people. Oftentimes when we you know, think of the word pornography, we don't see it as that bad of a sin or you, know, you could dabble in it, it's not gonna affect me, but the reality, it does affect you. Mm -hmm. It starts off as a seed and then it grows into a tree where it'll start to affect your relationship, mm -hmm. um, start to affect your relationship with God, start to affect your friendships. You'll find yourself isolating, um, isolating yourself from other people. It's hard and it's not easy, but with God, all things are possible. Yes. And so what you need to do if you want to walk in purity, if this is the desire of your heart that you mm -hmm. want to honor God with your body, um, you need accountability and you need to set just clear, That's a big one. Absolutely. clear accountability. basic boundaries on top of, of course, having a relationship with the Lord. Brittany and Richard are featured in the CBN One Hour Special. It's called Unhooked Purity in a Pornified World. And you can watch it today on the CBN News Channel or at CBN.com slash unhooked. And you can also watch their full interview at CBNNews.com. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch on this Valentine's Day. Remember, you can find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel anytime or online with CBNNews.com. Also, tell us what you think about the stories you've seen by emailing newswatch at CBN.com or talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.